Welcome to the video guys, BLN437, and today we're going to be talking about that blockbuster deal between the Seattle Mariners and the New York Mets. But before we get into that, if you guys haven't left a like already, make sure to leave a like. If you guys really like this video, make sure to leave a like. Sub if you are new, and make sure to follow me on Twitter at BLN437, and follow me on my Twitch channel, Twitch uh, twitch.tv slash BLN437. Both of those things will be linked down below I talk about baseball while playing on will be the show and it's just a really good fun time now let's get on to the deal so the Mets ended up trading up uh Jared Kanellick Justin Dunn uh Jerusalem Batista I believe his name is and Batista and Swarzek two of those guys Batista and Swarzek were signings that the Mets had signed last offseason that really didn't pan well Jay Bruce didn't really hit the way he ha uh, the way he had hit the year prior when he was with the Mets, and then they traded him to uh, Cleveland. And Anthony Swarzak was injured for a good chunk of the 2018 season, and when he was pitching, wasn't really that great either. Now, Seattle in, uh, Seattle got those guys in return, all those guys, for Edwin Diaz, who's probably the uh, one of the more up-and-coming closers in the game of baseball, probably top five, top three, if you want to put him in the top three. I don't believe he's better than uh, Kimbrell or Kenley Jensen. In my opinion, Kenley Jensen, when healthy, I don't believe he was healthy this season. Is one of the best closers in the game of baseball. But that's just me. And they get Robinson Cano, a 36-year-old second baseman, who really hasn't shown any decline. Now, when I when I saw this deal, I did think that the Mets lost completely. And in, in a in, in a way, they did. I, I I do believe they have. The the Mets might have won this trade short term, and I'll get to that in a second. But they lost it long term. Jared Kanellik and Justin uh, Dunn are two top-level prospects. They are the Mets' top 30 prospects. I'm not even talking about top 50, top 30. And I believe uh, Kanellik is listed as three, and Justin Dunn is the fourth-rated prospect in their system alone. Jared Kanellik has pure raw power. He can hit, has above-average speed, good arm, and good fielding. And I believe he's going to be a top outfielder in the game of baseball. Probably one of the better outfielders in the game of baseball in another three to four years. He's 19 years old, and he's got a lot of potential. A really good amount of potential. As for Justin Dunn, he has the ability to be uh, he has the ability to be a number one or number two starter in any rotation. Oh, and that even includes Seattle's future rotation. Now, Seattle, I personally believe Justin Sheffield is a year, maybe two years away. I don't think you have to rush him. If you bring him up at 24, you bring him up at 24. I mean, he's 22 years old. If he needs an extra year to work on his command, if his command isn't up to par this off season, or going into the season, I should say, then it's it's time to leave him in the minors. You, you don't need that. But they got a lot of talent here. And they also, the Mets gave up, I believe, $64 million, while Seattle gave up $20 million to the New York Mets. Which, the Mets are still eating up most of Robinson Cano's contract, let's face it. And, you know, Seattle, yeah, they're taking on some bad deals in Shorzak and Bruce, but they're not eating up as much as the Mets are eating up with Robinson Cano. They still have to eat up Cano's contract. Now, the prospects that they gave up, I don't believe are for Cano. They were obviously for Diaz. The Mets ended up taking the contract because Bruce didn't pan out and Shorzak was injured. But on top of Shorzak being injured, I mean, Shorzak is, is not better than Edwin Diaz. He's not. I hate to say it, but he's not. That, that's what the Mets really traded for here. And now I'm going to get to what I mean by the Mets won this trade short term. The Mets won this trade short term because it brings excitement to the Mets now. It allows people to be like, you know what? I'm interested in seeing what the Mets can do with this roster. And for Mets fans, I want to come out to the ballpark. I want to see Edwin Diaz. I want to see Robinson Cano. I want to see if this Mets team can contend for at least a wild card. And if not, can contend for the division. And the reason why I say that they can contend for a wild card or a division is they do have that starting pitching, as you guys can hear my cat there. But they do have that starting pitching. They have Noah Syndergaard, and they have Jacob DeGrom, and they have Steven Matson. When you have those three guys, you have a chance. Now, Yoannis Espedes will not be there at the beginning of the season, most, uh, for sure. He's having surgery on his heels, and that's going to take some time. But when healthy, the Mets have a lineup that consists of, and I'm talking about top hitters here, I'm not talking about the whole lineup. Consists of Conforto, I believe is going to be a good hitter. I believe he's going to hit 30 home runs. Cano, who can hit you 20 to 25 home runs. Nuanes Espedes, who, when healthy, can hit you 30. 
that's not bad. And, and Brandon Nimmo wasn't bad last season. He hit, you know, a good amount of homers. He did some things. Todd Frazier can do some things. So they have enough offense now to score some runs and to make you believe that they can do something in those games. Now, like I said, Cano is 36, but I do believe that Cano can give you 20 to 25 home runs, maybe 30. I do believe he'll drive an 80 to 90 RBIs, and I believe he'll hit two, 270 to 280, and he'll give you average to above average on base and slugging, in my opinion. We'll see how he does with defense. That remains to be seen. Now, the other thing here in this deal is the Mets have to find a way to get to Edwin Diaz, and I believe that their their whole thing is, is that, listen, if for three out of the four uh, days out of the week, or three out of the four games out of the week, or five, I should say. We have Syndergaard, DeGrom, and Matt's on the mound. If they can give, if they can at least give us six to seven innings, we'll find a way to work it out in the eighth inning with somebody, or we're going to go out there and get somebody for the eighth inning. And we got Diaz in for the ninth. That's just, that's what I believe the Mets, the Mets all process is. If, that, if, uh, if DeGrom and Noah Syndergaard and Matt's can get them deep into games, they have a shot to just get that bridge to Diaz because they don't really have anybody to, uh, that's a bridge for Diaz. They don't. They, they really don't. I mean, you look at what the, the Mets have in that bullpen. Schwarzenegger was their big signing last season. He wasn't healthy. And if he was healthy, there are people that believe he could have had a decent season because Jerry Blevins wasn't that great. And yeah, they have Robert Gazelman that came out of the pen. He, he was decent in certain moments out of the pen. And, and there were moments where he was shaky, like Robert Gazelman has been usually for the past two to three years. But still, he, he was better than what they had. And he's still there, I should say. He's still there, but it, it, it's still not enough to bridge yourself to Diaz. And Gazelman might be in that rotation with Seth Lugo, in my opinion. We'll see how that all goes, it, it, depending on who gets injured and who doesn't get injured. And, um, like I said, it, it, it brings excitement. It, I believe Cano can help Rosario become a better hitter. I believe that Cano just brings some type of level of excitement. Like I said, it, it doesn't help them long-term. Canelic and, and Dunn are going to be guys that I will help Seattle in the future, 100%. And Seattle, yeah, Jay Bruce is going to be in a bigger ballpark, so that might hurt his power. You know, they're getting Schwarzenegger. Schwarzenegger could be something that's incredible for Seattle, and then Seattle can trade him. Or both Bruce and Schwarzenegger can end up being big-time acquisitions that they got in this deal that ended up working out. They played decent, and going into the deadline, Seattle can flip them for more prospects, which isn't a bad, you know, which isn't a bad deal. You know, but the core guys in this in this trade are obviously Kanellik and Dunn. The fact that though the Seattle way were to get those two prospects without really having to take on much money anyways with Jay Bruce's contract or... Anthony Schwarzenegger is a huge, huge plus, and you can most likely trade them at the deadline to get something better than what they got currently, or just get something that they, or get something that they got currently in that deal, which isn't bad, like I said, but that all depends on what Bruce and Schwarzenegger do. So, that's what I, that's my thoughts on the trade. For Mets fans, do you guys like the deal? Do you guys hate the deal? Do you guys believe that Robinson Cano is going to help the Mets? And are you excited for the 2019 season coming up? Do you guys believe that the Mets can win the wild card? Do you guys believe that the Mets can win the division? I don't believe that they're good enough to take Atlanta's spot. I think Atlanta has the best overall talent in that division. But the Mets have a shot with that pitching. So, like I said, make sure to leave a like down below. Subscribe if you are new. And make sure to follow me on Twitter and on Twitch. Those links will be down in the description below. And I will see you guys in the next video as the Phillies look like they're close to a deal for Gene Segura from the Seattle Mariners as well. Once that trade is, uh, trade is complete and it's a done deal, I will make a video on that. And I'll see you guys in the next one.